Well, good evening. This is Kua. Over behind me, Royal Lankawi Yacht Club. And this is the main drag where people come to. Down the channel there, that's back towards Reback. And we came up here so we could take back a rather poorly code zero so the sailmaker can do his magic and uh, turn it into a shiny new white one. Right, off ashore. Taking the code zero to its last known resting place. Which with luck is going to be uh, handbags for some people. is where we tore the bottom out the dinghy. The wind had blown all these power boats right in tight and we caught the bottom of their propellers and slashed a metre long hole in the bottom of the dinghy. That wasn't much fun. Anne's favourite bit, the wobbly blue dock. Made in Canada, strangely enough. Ship all that air filled plastic halfway around the world. One bold leap. And this is the tourist dock. Tourist dock and the ferry dock for the island across the other side. And, for better or worse, it's been pretty busy the last few days. All the KL people coming into town for a holiday. One of the many feral cats around. The strange thing about Asian cats is they don't have tails. See? They only get these wee stumpy things, don't they? Some of it's all in a little bit need of TLC. And that catch there over the top, the small catch, he's in about a metre of water at high tide. And at low tide, he's higher ground. I think it's one of these boats where the owners went ashore, went home rather, for a break during the lockdowns and have since found they can't get back. The blue boat out there has been abandoned and taken over by the locals who are using it as their holiday home. So, better than it going to waste. I used to quite like a great British breakfast or preferably a Scottish one with 80 degrees. Uh, so it's quite different to be coming here to our favourite little hunt here, where we get roti, a cup of tea, and of course, a slightly curried dal sauce. On a fully sanitised table. As Anne says, on a fully sanitised table. All the restaurants coming to, coming to life for the evening. I wanted 12 fish. And a nice selection of fish. Oh, I'm just looking thank you. Yeah. So, these are, these are snapper? Yeah, red snapper and uh, this white snapper. White snapper? Yeah. Okay. And is it... Um, are they caught here? Uh, no. No? You get in market. Yeah, in market, yeah. right. Okay. I think that's bones from making the laxa. Bones and other squiddly diddly bits. This is on the way to the evening market, which occupies the car parking area. And here you can get any amount of t shirts, socks, trainers, flip flops, 
anything you like. Certainly seems to be in the culture here is that everybody eats out. You see this morning, noon and night. Families coming for a meal and uh, chowing down. The thing is, with our clock, we are always too early. Places are just getting set up when we are on our way back for Cruisers Midnight. The main drag into Kua. Heading for the town. And it looks like the market is on, so take our life in our hands and cross the road. This all dries out at low tide, but uh, some of the guys park their fishing boats up here. Right opposite the big hotel. They've got some great street art around here. The hornbill on one side of the bridge and the fishermen and a bit of crab poking around. The artwork on the other side of the bridge. This is the maiden who a uh, bit of a story to it. She tried to marry somebody, somebody didn't like it, took exception to it and the kiri knife, the twisty knife through the tree and she put a curse on Langkawi Island for seven generations and I think seven generations ended in the 80s and uh, that's when Langkawi started to prosper. Prior to that it was just a large paddy field I guess. For the last four or five months, when the market's been operating, you've been required to sign in here at this desk, and there's been security tape across the front. That was when the whole of Malaysia, population 35 million, was recording about 80 cases per day and this would be pretty much deserted. Anne and I walking around now with cases still a relatively modest 1500 a day. The place is mobbed and all the security is gone. Quite strange. On the other hand, people are very disciplined about masks using them all the time and outside the old container come restaurant staff at the washing up Some freshly roasted chicken, some not so freshly roasted chicken. And this will be the carvery. And that's your shaved ice. Jeans and t-shirts and if you look at the motorbike coming, mode of transport for a more poor and the wings. And as Anne says, this is uh, the source of high fashion and the way things are going at Marks and Spencers, they'll be getting their ideas from here. And the pyjama shop, Winnie the Pooh. Everyone 
licensed from Disney, I expect. Men's jeans, 10 ringgit or two pounds. 20 ringgit, there's the expensive one, four pounds. Ladies jeans, Ladies jeans. two pounds. Come to get your car washed. And I guess this drawing depicts the different nationalities of Langkawi and indeed Malaysia. Yes, this is the main crossroads in Kua Town. And it's usually as busy as this at all times of the day. It's the kind of shops that you used to go to with your mum when you were 10. And to get the week's groceries, you had to go to a dozen different shops. Whereas now you go to Tesco and B&Q or Bunnings and that's it. It's just what I've been saying, if uh, a grocery superstore like Tesco or Coles or Walmart opened up here, this lot would be shut within a fortnight. Langkawi is a duty-free island and along here every second shop is selling packets of 200 cigarettes for four quid and as much booze as you can guzzle not to mention duty-free chocolate although I'm not sure just how much duty is charged on chocolate products the back view of the new monument going up. I think there's been two guys working on it for the last year and mostly at night but uh, it is making progress but very slowly. HE Trading. That's the B&Q come Chandler's and where most of our pension goes. This is the back alley and the backs of all the restaurants yeah, and okay. probably the one we're looking for. So we'll double back. One thing they really like in Kua is they like their tiled floors for pavements which is really quite nice right up until it rains then it is an absolute skating rink. Snakes don't like shiny floors either. They get no traction, so once they're on the shiny floor, their movement is pretty limited. And found this guy yesterday. It's a leaf snake. And this is what we came for. One of the nicer looking restaurants in town. We'll go check in and see what they've got. I believe we're heading into the Korean part of town. Well, it's quite nice to see all these lights on. Because a few weeks ago, this was all just shut down but springing back to life, so hopefully that's a good sign. We met up with Michael and Priscilla from Highlight for lunch. Guess what? Curry! <laughs> We've been away for a couple of hours and our little catch has found its resting place for the evening. And that's it, back to the boat. That was a walk round to Kua, primarily to let friends and family know what we're up to and our environment. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. A little bit tedious.